Alrighty, welcome back everyone to the Player Zone YouTube channel and welcome back to another NBA review, reviewing the Game 3 matchup between the New York Knicks and the Cleveland Cavaliers from a bouncing and buzzing Madison Square Garden. Coming to this game, we, we all expected Madison Square Garden to be bouncing, um, but boy was it a loud, loud place um, on Friday night there. Um, the atmosphere was just incredible, one of the best sort of play atmospheres for a first round I guess you'll, you'll ever see and... And we've got the Sacramento fans going crazy, but this one might just top it. These fans were manic there. Um, and to see their, Clev, uh, their Knicks uh, do work against Cleveland Cavaliers and come into this game, expect a response from the Knicks. And especially as our uh, home there, Madison Square Garden, we expected a big response after their sort of disappointing game two performance. Um, the first quarter, to be honest, was a really, really ugly watch. Um, at times, it was, it was slow, stagnant sort of play. Um, both teams, I guess, at times had some good shots and open shots, but just weren't able to hit it. And it was a, a defensive masterclass, I guess, from both teams. And it was had that sort of NBA Finals, sort of Game 7 feel about it. But the way the defense was played, it was intense. It was up at the shooter, was fighting over screens and the like. And it, was, it made offense uh, quite hard to come by and shot making really hard to, um, to nail down. So it was, it was a scrappy old sort of first quarter there. Um, a big superstar early on was RJ Barrett, who showed up in this game. The first eight games really, really struggled um, at times, combined for 21 points from those first two games and being really, really inefficient. And I think you look at ESPN and um, Stephen A. Smith there calling out RJ Barrett as he really needed in the lineup. And G fired back uh, there on Friday night with some uh, excellent play, um, some excellent pressure on the rim. Uh, and early doors playing some really, really good defensive pressure, which. Um, he converted to a steal and got downhill a lot and that sort of got him going with some ease. He said layups downhill, getting into the paint, being aggressive and his 10 first quarter points w was a big difference um, with a really low scoring first quarter. They included two threes, which are really, really hard to come by early on in this game and he shot 67% from the field, which is quite impressive considering the low standards of offense uh, we saw. I guess for Cleveland, it was a Donovan Mitchell show again and he had little to no support in that first quarter. Shots weren't falling for anyone else, so Donovan Mitchell took it on himself there at times, and it was like a one-man show. Um, he came out really, really aggressive, nine points there in the first quarter of the Garden. Um, he talked about before the game uh, the significance of the Garden, how special this place is. So, you know, he lived up to the atmosphere. He, he handled the atmosphere and um, dealt with it well with a great, great start. Um, he went 57% for the field, and considering Cleveland was really, really struggling, that was a really, really impressive start for Mitchell and sort of held them afloat early on. Um, on the defensive end, I guess everyone played a really great defense, but a big shout out to Quinn and Grimes who started defending um, on Mitchell from the start there and, and really held him up and halted him uh, early in that game. Despite him with the nine points, no shot was easy. Um, he was denying the ball uh, at all times possible and Donovan Mitchell did struggle at times there in that first quarter. Um, and then on the, the uh, Cavalier side of it, Karis LeVert did his job on the defensive end. Um, very quiet offensive in the first half, um, no points at all, but in that first quarter especially, his um, defence and, uh, and ball denial, importantly, of Jalen Brunson was really, really impressive. He, he almost uh, looked invisible in that first quarter there, Brunson, because of the work um, Levert did on him, and it was hard to, it was hard to get the ball in Brunson's hands, and the Knicks were struggling um, because of that. So the ball was, was falling in the hands of the likes of Randall, Grimes, who were not hitting their shots, were, were missing some, some decent three looks, and... The offense really slowed from there on in. Looking at the first quarter, as I said, it was it was ugly and scrappy. Um, some poor play from both teams. The Knicks ended up shooting 26%, whilst the Cavs shot um, not much better, but 33%. And the, both teams nodded up a, a 17 apiece coming into the end of the first quarter. Um, once again, showing the impressive nature of both teams' defense. Um, with the teams both combined for three for 23 from downtown, just showing how poorly the three-point shooting for both teams was in that first quarter there. Um, continuing on to the second, both teams still struggled to shoot the ball um, as defences continued to um, reign and remain on top there. Um, and I guess on top, I think it's important to mention, but the basketball at times was quite poor. It was lacking that sort of star quality. Um, and both teams were really struggling in that department to make their skill um, and play quite silky. Um, it was Mitchell Robinson who started really, really big in that second quarter there. His shot altering, his, block, his blocking out, boxing out in the paint um, and his ability to grab an offensive rebound and put that ball back in the basket was really, really big. Um, and it showed his importance, I guess, at both ends of the floor for the Knicks. It was not only just the offensive rebounds and uh, the ability to, to uh, find second chance opportunities. It was also 
um, his hustle on the defensive end to ultra shots, not necessarily block shots, but make it hard for, for the Cavs to get second chance points and to get clean open shots. Um, it was a big turning point when the Knicks went to isolation basketball and allowed Jalen Brunson to go one-on-one -on -one at the top of the key because that's his hot zone. That's where he was uh, cooking tonight. Um, he had a great um, showcase of his footwork, getting deep into the paint, um, fading away, stepping through on multiple occasions. Um, and the highlight was his one of his three dunks for the whole season after a steal on Donovan Mitchell, which got the, uh, the Madison Square crowd up and about. They didn't need to go any louder themselves. Um, his six points led all scorers in this quarter. So once again, showing how low scoring these quarters were, but um, had a really, really big impact. And considering he was almost invisible in that first quarter there, it was really, really um, massive for the Knicks to have Brunson put out his six points and sort of dictate the offense uh, for the Knicks there. Um, uh, big to note that uh, Hart picked up his three fouls quite early in the second quarter, so sat for most of that time, and it was Quentin Grimes who I mentioned that first quarter. He played a really, really big role on, on uh, Donovan Mitchell there, and um, Donovan Mitchell slowed his offensive output in that, in that second there, um, not as big as the first, and it was really Quentin Grimes' hard work, and though he might not be the biggest offensive threat, his, his defensive work was, was quite remarkable, and it was sort of worrying for Knicks fans to see him go off injured with a shoulder contusion late there in the second uh, quarter. So we'll see how he goes here, if he comes back in time for the early start there um, in game four on Sunday. Look at other players. Manuel quickly played a huge role. A great ball denial and defence in Darius Garland who really, really struggled in this game and um, was a shadow of his game too self. And um, he managed to hit one of the f uh, Knicks four first half eight pointers as well. So Manuel quickly sort of did it all. Um, again, uh, not someone now on the statue that stands out or not someone you instantly look at, but his impact off the bench is, is remarkable and played a really, really big role. He's quick along the ground. Um, he's agile and his ability to stop Garland getting to the pain and getting some wide open shots is really, really important. Um, he's closing out and, and Garland, I, was, I know it was, a, it was a really, really big impact in that second quarter there. As Garland had some shots that were almost makeable, but he gets that closeout pressure and the, uh, the pressure of the Madison Square Garden crowd probably got the better of him. Um, Cleveland only made 15 points in the second quarter um, adding to their 17 in the, in the first quarter there and this included eight turnovers to which led to open dunks for RJ Barrett uh, running down the floor um, who converted his 14th first half points which is really really impressive considering his efforts in the first two games there um, and I guess the biggest difference similar to game two was the field goal percentage in the second quarter um, the Knicks went at 59% and the Cavs shot the ball at 28% from the field in the second, just showing that um, massive differential and the importance of defenses played in this series. I guess the importance of role players. It was RJ Barrett um, in this second, uh, in this first half, in a particular second quarter there, versus um, Karis Levert in, in game two in the second quarter took over. So I guess those two, I, I talked about it after the game two review, um, those role players have a really, really uh, big job in this series to try and dictate which way the series falls in the end. Um, I guess another difference going to the half is the 18 points the Knicks got off turnovers. So a turnover-heavy game, but the Knicks converted these turnovers and the careless play of the Cavs was really clear to see. Um, I don't know if it was carelessness or if it was just the nerves getting into them as the crowd was loud and in, in their ears. I think many of these players would never experience an atmosphere like this. It was truly just remarkable to to watch this game and it was uh, eye-catching throughout, realistically. Um, and I thought that could be a big difference. Now the Cavs have seen it come game four, they could adjust to this, but um, it was massive in that second quarter there. Um, the Cavs only got three points off turnover, so the plus 15 was one of the big differences early. And um, the 45 to 32 score was Cleveland's f lowest first half in over 109 playoff games, just showing the carelessness of the basketball one and two, the defense of the Knicks um, standing up to the pressure and, and meeting the Cavs um, front on there. Uh, Cleveland ended up losing a quarter 28-13, which, as I noted down, it was similar to game two when um, Cleveland took over. Looking to the third, it was Mitchell Robinson's hustle early. Um, uh, he was massive in giving the, the Knicks his second chance shot opportunities. We talked about game one, how he, in big and important he was, and he continued in this game. It wasn't particularly just the offensive rebounds, but the ability to box out um, and give chance to other people to, to put the ball in the basket or, or rebound the ball, which was really, really big. And... I noted here, Jalen Brunson continued to dictate the offense for the Knicks. Um, that third quarter, down the stretch, it was really, really impressive. As I, as I said before, the isolation ball seems to suit him. How the Cavs um, sort of adjust has be really, really interesting. But um, 
at the top of the key there, one on one. If it's Sadie Osmond, if it's Karis Levert, if it's anyone else, Isaac Okoro, it seems to be no one can stop him at the moment. When, he, when he's one on one, I think it's almost a certain bucket, especially from that sort of mid range and deep down in there, um, into the key there. Um, Karis Levert's first field goal came um, uh, with eight minutes to go there in the third, but he followed this with um, a second three, so back to back threes there. And he got the Cavs to close into 11 points. And at that time, I don't think momentum changed really, but um, the Cavs sort of get a stranglehold in the game and their offense started to really show the, the capabilities they had and s- some of the features they showed there in um, game two in Cleveland. Uh, but I guess as Levert found his shot, so did Julius Randle and back-to-back field goals. Uh, saw his stroke come back to him, um, nailing some nice shots down there in the third quarter and got um, the Knicks crowd uh, back up and, and into it because um, there was a short little run there that Cleveland had that they could have just Maybe if another shot landed, could have got a stranger hold of the game, but it was Julius Randle's offense that sort of killed it off there. Um, as I know down here, RJ Barrett, he continued to be really, really efficient. He just nailed the timely shots when they needed to be nailed, whether that be from three or was getting down deep into the paint. Um, I got in the big three midway through the third to really extend that margin was was massive. Um, look at the Cavs' offense, it starts to seem to, seem to sort of click a bit more um, as we got deep into the third quarter. Um, some big threes are being hit and they improved to shoot 53% um, from the field, which included 50% from three. Um, and considering they only nailed two three-pointers there in that first half, was quite quite impressive to see them sort of find their range again. And it was on the back of Karis LeVert and um, the likes of Donovan Mitchell that sort of got the game back on, um, I guess they got the got offense back on Cleveland's terms and they sort of found their, their mojo a bit. Um, but despite this, the Knicks were just rampant and, they were awesome in the defensive eff- effort and um, Jalen Brunson just kept doing his doing his thing on the offensive end and time and again he got to his spot and was floating in buckets from left, right and centre. It felt like um, had his eighth point of the quarter after a nice floater deep in the paint and the Knicks got their biggest lead of uh, 16 at that time um, and the 8-0 run at the end and gave the Knicks a 17-point lead going into the final quarter, winning that quarter 27-23. So much of a closer quarter, similar to the first there. Um, looking to the fourth, um, the lead sort of just grew out a bit. Uh, a pair of dunks earlier by Hartenstein and Mitchell Robinson extended lead to 18 for the Knicks um, as the big men sort of went to work earlier. They, they were really aggressive in that fourth. And um, once again, the battle of the big men, I think uh, despite Moby's improvement and composure under the, under the basket there, the New York Knicks big men, Again, not still filling the stat sheet, but there's hustle plays, their their effort, their ability to set screens and clear space for the likes of Barrett, the likes of Brunson and others to get down in the paint is really, really impressive. And I think they won that battle in game three here. Um, no down the pace of the Knicks, which was really, really big in that second quarter run, was also present in the fourth and um, it was really, really important to their ability to get uh, the ball in the basket. They were swinging the ball, they were pushing with pace and um, it sort of... Sh- showed the Knicks, I guess, their blueprint of how they're going to go forward in this series. If they want to do successful, they've got to be able to swing that ball and be push, push the ball when they can and they get a turnovers, push downhill, and that seems to be the blueprint to, to winning games of basketball for the Knicks and not letting that Cleveland defense are really set up. Um, the Cavs continue to struggle early in the quarter to put the ball in the basket and they continue to miss great great looks from behind the arc. There was some uh, great offensive sort of sets being um, drawn up by JB Bickerstaff and early in the fourth there was some great open shots, but it seemed like the team was almost allergic to putting the ball in the basket and just couldn't get that ball to, or see that ball just to swish through the hoop there. So um, it was Obi Top, as the Obi Top and show late um, midway through the fourth there, um, uh, hitting a, a three and following that with alley oop and one dunk, which is if you didn't need to get the crowd any louder, he got it um, even louder. They, they were rampant, they were up and about, and they were manic there in the fourth chanting Obi Toppin's name and he got that crowd fired up and further extend that lead um, and Jalen Brunson just kept going, kept doing his work. Uh, more isolation basketball, he got down here, we got into the paint um, and he helped the Knicks extend to their game high 27 point lead. Um, he was assisted I guess by Josh Hart who, who was a sort of a good nice offensive punch in this game similar to game one, I guess not the output um, but the ability to deliver the ball, hit some timely threes um, was really, really important. Um, and then also um, quickly was awesome. Not only the defensive end, but his ability to get downhill, get in the paint um, and hit some nice layups there late in the fourth, which allowed the lead to blow out to 27. Um, and I, after that, the final four minutes was sort of a dead rubber. Both the stars of both teams uh, sat down and 
it was some of the bench players that played. So the final score ended up being 99 to 79. The Knicks holding Cleveland to under 80 points. Um, an important stat, I guess, no other team has been held under 80 points this season. So showing, I guess, the carelessness one for the Cavs, but how impressive that Nick defense was. And uh, I keep saying it, but if they want to go far in this playoff series, that, that that's their um, uh, hat in the calling card they should keep calling to because some of the defense that was played against like Donovan Mitchell, Darius Gull, and these guys are serious um, guys in this game. And the big two, the Twin Towers of Mobley um, uh, and also Allen down there, these guys are serious business. They're, they're not an easy team and the Knicks have really made them look ugly in this game and it's because of their defence and their pressure they supply on the ball and their ability to fight over screens. So it was it was an impressive watch to see and um, I'm glad the Knicks fans got to see uh, their team win at home again. Um, I guess looking at the key takeaways from this game, it was RJ Barrett early on. He responded in a big way. Um, I said earlier, Stephen A. Um, Smith from ESPN and called him out um, asking if he was really needed in the rotation and he showed up early. Those 10 first quarter points, uh, 19 in the game, shooting 6-7%, which is a big deal because he has been really inefficient in these first two games. So the efficiency there was really big, especially in that first quarter there with those 10 points out of the 17 of the team. Um, he really swung the – and got the Knicks back into action with when Brunson and Randall were really struggling. So if he's going to be big, if the Knicks are going to be big in this playoff, they're going to need RJ Barrett as that third sort of offensive punch to – have this sort of game to supply you sort of big um, point out point outbursts and in times of game the, the Knicks really needed him um, and he allowed the Knicks to stay afloat in a time that could have been really rough early on there. Um, I guess to go along with this, he had his eight boards and his presence was shown at both ends of the floor. He was a defensive presence at one end and um, I guess early on, especially the offensive presence at the other. Um, and I'm excited to see how he goes forward with this. Will he follow it up in game four? Um, how did the Cavs sort of adjust this do they sort of give a bit more respect uh, with the ball they were switching off him a few times in games one and two so we'll see how the Cavs adjust um, as we go forward into game four and five Cleveland side of things Darius Garland the, the superstar of game two really really struggled in this game three uh, shooting four for 21 from the field when he hit one three and looked out of his depth um, in this sort of manic uh, Madison Square Garden environment I guess not only him but a lot of the Cavs players had looked out of their depth but um he really struggled today and if Cleveland are going to take it to the Knicks, they're going to need that one-two punch of Mitchell um, and Garland like we saw in game two the, and how successful that was um, without his shot making and the ability to stretch the floor and hit some threes, it, it comes quite easy for the Knicks to defend, double up onto Mitchell or to to force the ball to, into the paint where they've got those big men who dominate and alter shots. So I, I expect Darius Garland is, to respond. He's a great player. I expect him to come back strong in game four and make an impact, but... I think to his offensive output and I guess I can't just blame on him. It was a lot of other Cavs, but it can be a cause of, of their big loss tonight. Um, and then looking at the final point, I've said it already so many times, but the Madison Square Garden effect is real. Um, Cleveland shooting 39% from the field throughout the game, having 20 turnovers and being the first team to be held under 80 points this season. It, it was partly to the fans. They were manic. They were loud. Um uh, they were in their ear and it, it felt like, a, as I said, an NBA sort of finals game seven sort of atmosphere. They, they were up for it. Uh, and you can tell it, this is a, a city and a, and a team that's been starved of playoff basketball in recent years. They were ready for this and they got behind their team and this sort of young Cavs team that outside of Mitchell haven't really experienced a true playoff run. Um, they learned a true uh, sort of a, a harsh reality and a, and a lesson here that it's hard to win on the road and if they're going to try and win game four, they're going to have to block out that, or the... Um, yeah, the atmosphere and and the bright lights of the Madison Square Garden court because many have faltered before them and, and they really did struggle in this game here and I feel that the crowd sort of urged the Knicks over the line and helped them early, especially where the game was quite ugly and um, back and forth early on there. Um, so I guess it was exciting to see the, the Madison Square Garden crowd in full voice and it was really made the game really exciting to watch as it was an awesome atmosphere down there. Um, look at, back at this game, something I expected to be honest, at MSG, the first game there um, in the playoffs, I expected the Knicks to play some good basketball and bounce back. But as we've seen all series, it's been back and forth. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Cavs in game four really give it to the Knicks. Um, I'd be excited to review that game as well coming up um, early uh, hours on Monday morning there in, in, here in Perth. But Sunday afternoon there um, in New York. But 
yeah, it'll be a really, really exciting game. I'm loving these matchups, these storylines, the RJ Barrett versus Karis Levert, the big men matchup, who wins that battle, and then I guess the big storyline, the Donovan Mitchell versus Jalen Brunson storyline. The storylines everywhere, there's drama everywhere. It's always going to be when the Knicks are playing, but uh, I've been really, really excited about these first three games and excited to see how this series goes. Could definitely be going seven games, but I guess we'll uh, wait out and see. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, share with some friends, and um, I appreciate you watching and supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys soon.